Hi everyone, welcome again to our theory section and part two we're going to be looking at the opposing foot movement at the other end of the spectrum which is supination. So as mentioned before a supinated foot is termed a rigid lever so it's nice and strong. It's a good position to be weight bearing on and it's a good position to be pushing and propelling from. Once our tissues, muscles, fascia has loaded during the elongation involved in pronation, they get stimulated to shorten and contract, coming via a central tripod position and into a supinated position. The minute we hit the end range of pronation and start returning, we are supinating. Similar from our full supination position, when we come down via neutral, we are pronating. So let's have a close look with our model foot. Because everything is going in the other direction, we are now rotating outwards. So, as the shin moves or the tibia moves, it's going to drag the talus in an outward direction. The result of this is that we have a lift of that inside arch and the inside arch will shorten and come together. Correspondingly, we need to have opening. And we see that now in the outside arch or the lateral uh, longitudinal. So as I rotate, you can see this opens. Creates lots of space here for cuboid as well. The heel will also do a reverse movement and as I rotate, it tilts in. So, we have a complete counter picture from what we had with our pronation. I'll show you with my foot. I'm in tripod. My talus rotates outwards and it drags with it my forefoot. From side on, I'm rotating. My arch comes together, lifts, raises. From the outside, I rotate. My lateral arch lengthens and opens. I still have nice long toes and I still have connection with my tripod. One, two, three. That is supination. If my first toe joint loses contact, that isn't supination. My foot has left the ground so it doesn't have that tripod alignment. From the front, it would look like that. There is something that we look at with our feet when we are assessing and also as a treatment. It's called the windless mechanism. This is a connection through the arch and a supination style movement that is triggered from um, extension of the first toe. So as I lift my toe up, what we should see is external rotation or lifting of the talus. From side on, I lift my toe and you can see I'm getting this shortening and lifting of the arch. This is called the active windless mechanism. Lifting the toe, shortening the plantar fascia, creates a lift in the arch, creates a rigid foot and creates external rotation in the shin. If I am to rise up on my toes, it creates this same movement pattern, and this is called a passive windlass. So again, my toes extend, it shortens my arch, and opens on the outside of my foot. This position in our world is a rise. So every time you come up onto demi point, you are coming into a passive windlass mechanism. Looking at supination from the back, if I rotate, you'll see my heel tilts in and then comes back to centre again. The heel tilts in and back to centre. And this is why when we come up onto a rise and demi point, we also want to see the heel tilting in and coming down again. 
tilting in and coming down. Now if we compare this to the pronation video where we showed coming up in a pronated foot versus a supinated foot. So if I come up and I really screw into that demi point, that is very solid, nice and rigid. I'm weight bearing on my rigid lever. Another watch point with supination and our rises, we need to remember that the line of force is very direct and running centrally. So if we come up here and then come into full supination, you'll get a little peak of the heel, but it rotates around a central axis. If I do this, I'm sickling and breaking out of supination. This is the same when looking at the rear leg. So if we're watching this one, and I take my weight forwards, you can see that my rear foot is supinating again. From side on, I lunge, it supinates. I need to be wary though when I'm doing my lunge rehab that I don't sickle or I don't come up so high that I then come into type 2 pronation. I want to keep contact again with it at least two of my points of the tripod. Just as there is a type 1 supination where we are twisting and the ankle is open or extended and slightly plantar flexed, there is a type 2 supination also where we have the same foot mechanics but with a bent ankle or a, a dorsiflexed ankle. So you can see here, my leg is flexed, I'm rotating and I'm still getting the lift of my arm. This type two supination is useful for lateral or rotatory movements. It is not okay for plies and jump landing because it doesn't load the foot. So if I squat and use a rotational arm driver, I want to be able to see type 2 supination, type 1 pronation, dancing together, having a little lead and follow foot dance. This is the same if I'm working in lateral drills, my feet need to be able to conform to the floor. In a closer view, it would look like this. This is a rotational pattern though. It's not the same as doing a plie and loading through the feet, which is what we want with our pronation movement pattern.